Hi all, and welcome back to part two of why you don't need to be a macro master to build a financial model. Uh, in this blog tutorial, we're going to look at a simple goal seek macro. So we're going to follow on from the copy and paste macro that we looked at in part one. If you haven't already done so, I recommend you go to www.videofinancialmodeling.com slash blog and check out the blog post. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to do question one again, but we're going to solve it using a goal seek. Okay, so once again, we're going to go to view and we're going to go to view macros or rather, sorry, we're going to go to view and then record macro and we're going to call this one goal seek. Okay. And let's just change this number to 12,500 or something like that. Or you can manipulate the numbers in here if you want. Doesn't matter. Um, all we're trying to do here is break the arrangement fee circularity. Okay, so if you don't understand the arrangement fee circularity, look back at blog number one. Okay, so all we're going to do here is we started recording. We're going to go to data, what if analysis, goal seek. And we're going to go seek that debt check to zero. And we're going to change this hard coded number here. And we're going to go OK and OK. And then we're going to stop the macro. And now we're going to go in and manipulate that macro. So we're going to go to view macros, view macros, and goal seek. And we're going to go edit. Now, I think that, that's fine. So we're going to go and look back here. D11 is the calc. D12, so D12 is that. No, I don't think we need any of that junk up the front. And D13 is debt check so I don't even think we need that first one debt check equals zero by changing debt hard okay so all we're doing is we're changing this number to get to zero and eventually these two numbers are going to converge when this is zero Okay, so I think that's it. Let's save that. Let's go on. Let's put 12,500. Let's go and macro, view macros, goal seek, run, and that solves. Okay, so we can change this number. We can change these hard coded inputs, and we can go and run the macro again. View macros, goal seek, and run. And that does that. And then let's just go back, do it one more time, put that back to a thousand. View macros, goal seek, and run. Okay, and that that solves the model for an arrangement v circularity. Okay, in the next part of this tutorial, and I'm going to give this to you for homework. If you want video financial modeling, or I'm happy to put up the solution to this problem or even do a further blog on it. And it's about avoiding circularities in your debt service reserve account. And circularities do occur in your debt service reserve account if you're earning interest on that debt service reserve account and that's feeding back into your CFADS line. So what we're gonna do here is I'm going to give you a big hint. Um, what we need to do is we need to do a count if formula. Okay, and on this check. So we're going to copy and paste this calculated area just like we did with the single cell in part one of why you don't need to be a macro master to build a financial model. And we're going to check it down here to make sure all these values are zero. And like I said, 
the hint is that you should use a COUNTIF formula to do this. So we're going to leave that up to you. Post a comment if you'd like us to do a third blog on this. Uh, more than happy to do so or even post the final answer to the question um, up on, on the website. Okay, so hopefully these two parts or these ser this series of um, macros uh, gives you the confidence firstly to implement a macro in a financial model and also to realize that you don't have to be a macro master to build a financial model or a complex financial model. There's only going to be three sort of macros that you'll probably need in your lifetime if you're a, if you're a financial model uh, or financial analyst.